Okay, so welcome to Kauai Farm to ECE. Um, my name is Stormy Souza, and I'm from the Puna district of Kauai. And I work with Malama Kauai as their food access manager. And I've been a part of the Farm to ECE team since its birth in 2021. And I wanted to just get a quick temperature check. Um, how many of you like food? You can say it out loud. <laughs> yes. Lots. Lots. We like to eat. I do. Um, <laughs> Yay. So that's awesome because that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, but not just any kind of food, right? So we want to talk about good kind local food. And real quick, I'll just give you a little brief about Malama Kauai. So we are a community based nonprofit uh, that's focused on increasing local food production and access for a more uh, resilient Kauai. And we've been doing this work since 2006. Uh, farm to School has been a major strategy of this work since 2010 and continues today. So I just kind of wanted to hear from you folks in the chat, if you could please share your name, uh, the island that you live on, and what you do to get Keiki excited about eating fruits and veggies. And if you haven't really done that, which I highly doubt, but you know, you never know, no worries. Um, share what you would like to try. So yeah, we're always loving to hear and for you folks in the room to hear each other's ideas on how you like to get kids involved with sharing fruits and vegetables. Um, and then I'm also just, I just want to know what island you guys is living on. <laughs> um, and then I can go first too while you guys are thinking and typing. Um, this little bubble, this circle picture with the little boy, that's my son. He's six years old. Um, Bluey is watching him right now. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I really like to use extra veggies in like our soups and stews. Um, but sometimes we'll make fun things like these little avocado egg and ham muffins. And they definitely taste different, right? But then we get fun with it and we'll put those little candy eyeballs. He's a little boy, he loves monsters and dinosaurs and, and trucks and stuff. So it's just a fun way to include him. Even when we're like baking, he gets to stir and measure and it's just fun, yeah. So yeah, excited to read the chat. Um, and I'll just keep on along and then share about our farm to school journey. So MK is um, deeply passionate about Farm to School and is the founder of the Kauai School Garden Network, which started again in 2010. Um, since then, we've coordinated school garden installations across the island. We developed two Farm to School pilots at Hawaiian Charter Schools, and we hold tons of stakeholder collaborations and meetings and do presentations like this today. Uh, we also founded the Kauai Farm to School Hui in 2018, and that helped us to provide direct food access uh, through various food distributions like our farm to families throughout the pandemic, as well as Kau Kau for Keiki, which is a statewide program that the DOE does. Um, and we've done that for the past three summers. So we just um, try to fill that summer meal gap when kids are not in school and they're not getting that their breakfast snack and lunches so that's just a quick timeline of our farm to school journey and i would like to mention that we do um we did launch our food hub it's called kwailokofood.com and uh, we have a food hub facility being built right now in moloa'a it's like brand new and beautiful and we're so excited to work out there yay and I just kind of wanted to pause because food hub is not necessarily a term that everyone is familiar with. Uh, we use the word a lot. Um, and you might be wondering what that is. So we included the USDA official definition here. But, uh, you know, have any folks in the room shopped at a food hub on their island? Uh, if so, you can unmute and maybe just shout out their name. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. So we can learn about something new that's happening in the islands. Uh, so a food hub is really just to summarize, we take in produce and food products, 
from our local farmers, ranchers, and food producers. And then we manage the sale and delivery of those goods. Um, this saves time for producers and streamlines their delivery so they can focus on growing and or making food. So really, you know, just taking everything in the farm area, bringing it to the hub, it stays in the hub for maybe a day, gets packed, and then it goes right back out into the island. Um, and this offers an alternative way to shopping locally for all of our commercial, institutional, and community customers. And so for Kauai, I don't know, do any of you folks live on Kauai? Just me? Okay. <laughs> We do have one pride. We oh. do. Sorry, we do have one provider that lives on Kauai, but I, she's not here tonight. It looks like. Okay, cool. Yay. Maybe I know her. I hope so. Uh, Laura Matsuyama. Oh, okay. I got to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, just real quick for Kauai, because each island does have, if not one or more food hubs, and I can talk about that a little later. Um, but for our food hub on Kauai, um, we specialize in connecting our local food providers with our island's ECEs. So we like them to meet, and we hope to be that PEVA, that um, joining piece that brings people together. Um, we also offer a lot of business to support to all of our 100 plus producers. We share farming, uh, farm business assistance, and also over a decade's worth of consumer market data. And that's to help them identify gaps in the market that they could fill to expand and increase their sales. So I know if you might shop at the farmer's market, you might, for us, you see a lot of the same produce like eggplant, bok choy, um, squash, maybe some zucchini and sprouts and lettuce. Like everybody grows the same thing. So we try and help farmers grow different kinds of stuff so that they can sell more. Um, and then some quick data points here. 55% uh, of food producers supported are BIPOC owned businesses that work with us. Uh, $500,000 of local food has been purchased for each of the past three years, which is amazing just here on Kauai. And then um, a 5.9 increase in revenue is generated for farmers year over year since 2020. And a lot of that is because we accept uh, SNAP EBT benefits as well as uh, a deluxe. And I can talk about that a little bit more too. But we really prioritize working with schools and also food pantries um, and do make a lot of time for collaboration and partnership building and technical assistance, even grant writing, all the good stuff. So our Farm to ECE project was really awesome. Oh, and I just, sorry, I just want to go back to Snap in the Bucks just because not sure if you guys are aware, but we do always try to get the word out on the bucks. Um, if you have any parents that are SNAP EVT be um, beneficiaries that have those benefits, definitely let them know that the bucks is like the sister company to SNAP, where they can buy local produce and poi and receive 50% off using their SNAP benefits. So it's a huge way to leverage their federal dollars and um, you know, support farmers and food producers directly. So they can do the, the local produce and local poi for 50% off. Um, and then, ah, farm to ECE. So this pilot uh, takes this work a step further. So we really try to support the young children because for so long we were just focusing on farm to school, right? So kindergarten through 12th grade, there's a lot going on at the DOE. Um, and there's a lot of protocol and procedure and things that we have to, you know, work with a huge institution like the Department of Education. So for us at um, Malama Kauai, we felt that looking at the ECEs or the early childhood educators uh, was a good way to um, just, you know, feed the young kids and get them ono, you know, build that iini or desire for these local foods at a really young age when they're still really developing their palate. Um, thanks to the support from our funders, we shared incentives with 16 ECE sites to purchase healthy food. 
um, through our food hub, kwailokofood.com, to feed their students throughout the day. And then ECEs were given the freedom to budget their incentives as needed and serve food in the manner that suited their capabilities. So they, we kind of just left it up to them. And in this big um, picture is just like one order that an ECE made and you get all these yummy things. Um, and then you can just create whatever you want with your kids. So they do have a lot of items to choose from. We do our best to get a wide variety on our store available. So anything from fruits, veggies, poi, eggs, meats, and value-added products are up for grabs, and those are all locally sourced. Um, and then they do fun activities with the kids, you know, to engage them. So including sensory play, doing salad shakers, um, garden picnics, smoothie making, and just easy meal preparation, like little Tita here at um, Punanaleo o Kauai. Every morning for breakfast, they let the kids like slice maia and um, get, you know, their fine motor skills working. And that's me and my friend and our kids, and we're making smoothies together. So just small kind of stuff I'm sure you guys do too in your homes. Um, but ECE programs also received uh, critical technical assistance and also cultural appropriate resources to support local food from procurement to plates. So all the good stuff. And <laughs> these kids are so adorable, I swear. Like <laughs> aunties are sending me pictures almost like every other day with like all their cute photos of the children. It's so much fun. Um, but we created our initial project after discussing various approaches with ECs across the island. So we did a lot of talking first and listening foremost. Um, awards were granted in 2019 and we were ready to launch. Um, and then unfortunately the pandemic hit, we all know what happened there. Um, so we kind of just set this project aside to meet the urgent needs of our community and then picked it back up in 2021 when schools were opening back up slowly. Um, we partnered with 15 sites, the first phase, the 21 through 22 year, and then 16 sites in the 22 to uh, 2023. Um, and some sites also even continuing on into this next third and, and um, this third phase. Um, and of course we always survey our aunties I'm sorry, I just keep saying aunties because that's normally who's leading the school because they're fabulous and handle. Um, so 89% of the ECE said they are very likely to continue farm to see ECE activities even after the free money stops. <laughs> um, and here's some quick impacts. Thanks again to our funders in that first year in 2021, uh, $4,800 in local food purchased reached 884 children and supported 28 food producers. And that again is Punanaleo, only because my son went there. So <laughs> they were like our poster childs for a while. Um, Kumu Punohu and Alaka'i Kahai holding all those groceries that we were able to distribute to the Ohana. Um, and I just like to mention that 54% of the keiki uh, that we were reaching uh, were from low-income households, so it was really targeted and focused in who we were trying to serve. And the same could be said about our food producers too. 54% um, were BIPOC-owned businesses. So, yeah, we try to get where we need to be. Um, I don't know, does anybody recognize this little guidebook? <laughs> Uh, we were also able to publish Gardens to Grinds. I think you guys all received a copy. Uh, this recipe guidebook features 45 CACFP compliant Hawaii style recipes, highlighting local ingredients. And thanks to the support from Nemours Children's Health, we were able to print 543 copies and share them with ECEs across the Pai'aina at no charge. Um, another 500 copies were printed and given to Ohana participating in the WIC Produce Subscription Program. And we're also working to make Garden to Grinds a free online resource that anyone can use and enjoy. So stay tuned for that. 
And then in this previous year, um, $7,000 in local food purchase reached 548 keiki and also supported over 48 local producers. So you might be thinking, hey, how come less kids? But <laughs> during this phase, we actually expanded our focus to include more family child care providers like you guys. Um, so that's why you kind of see a dip in the numbers because we weren't reaching the larger schools with like 30 to 40 kids. It was mostly aunties with maybe six to eight keiki. But I really loved hearing you know, the feedback from them and also seeing what they were ordering. I saw that because they had a smaller group, they were able to really like bring in a wide variety of food that we had to offer um, and, and do a lot more um, hands-on activities with them. So it was really nice to see the quality happening from, you know, it doesn't always have to be huge numbers, but 56% um, of those keiki were in low-income households. Uh, producer numbers did go up because we were able to just bring on more producers into the food hub and 58% of those producers are BIPOC owned business. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned BIPOC is Black, Indigenous and people of color. And let's see. So we did hear a lot because again, we do love to make people fill out surveys and evaluations. <laughs> so much time on our hands, yeah, to fill out paperwork. Um, we try to keep them easy, um, but we do love to hear the feedback because we are always wanting to improve and, and really tailor these programs to our providers. But we love to hear what they say. So like 89% of ECEs rated their ordering experience five stars and 45% of ECEs prefer to order every other week. Um, they felt that it was more manageable because they're getting so much fresh produce, right? To cut and chop and clean and do all the things. It's better to just do it every other week and then you can bulk and freeze and store and kind of work from your fridge for a little while. Um, things are being picked fresh like that day, that morning, 30 minutes ago, and then being packed. So things do last longer, like lettuce and bananas, oranges and uh, watermelon and things like that. So it totally works. Um, we found out I analyzed all the items people bought because <laughs> I'm so nerdy like that. And um, we found that bananas and cucumbers are the top selling affordable items that Keiki love. Um, that might be different for you on different islands because I know we all have microclimates and different seasons of things growing. Um, so it'd be interesting to find out what is good with you guys. Um, and then 100% of our ECEs loved our delivery service, rated it five stars. So love it. Um, we did see some uh, similar barriers sprout up for majority of our ECEs and they graciously shared some of their solutions. For instance, when you shop with our food hub, there's a specific window when the store is open. So from Friday at noon to Monday at noon is when you can shop. And then you receive your groceries on a Wednesday. And many other food hubs operate this way. So because majority of our products never sit on the shelves for more than a day, like the orders that are made are given to the, the farmer and the food producer, and they will actually pick things to order and deliver it to us, which we then pack same day and then deliver same day. So it is a tight window. Um, and the opportunity to shop can be easily missed. So the simplest solution we found was just to set a weekly reminder on your phone and computer because we're kind of, we have those on hand a lot. Um, but we found that that really just did the trick. Everybody just needed a quick reminder on their phone and then they could go log in real quick, make their order, boom, boom, all good. <laughs> um, there are some other barriers to like, you know, having a, um, if you shop at the grocery store plenty, then it's like, okay, we have every, almost everything at our hand at all times. But when you're shopping locally, we're also shopping seasonally. So sometimes you won't find what you're ono for um, or what you want. So you just gotta stay flexible and maybe try something new to substitute. You know, if there's no citrus right now, then you can eat mango. <laughs> That's a good one. 
Um, there are some picky palates out there. I'm sure you guys know. I've met this auntie at the bottom says all her kids eat everything she makes. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, take my son, please. Um, <laughs> uh, but there are, you know, picky palates. And she suggested that you include cakey in the prep as much as possible. Even them just opening the box or looking through the bag of groceries with you or helping you put the lettuce away in the fridge, you know, like those small kind things really encourage their participation and their, um, you know, joy in trying new things. And she also makes a two bite rule. So you cannot just say you're not going to eat something. You have to try it at least twice. So, or two bites. Um, and she finds that that's really helpful. And of course, the other thing, well, I know for you folks, I'm assuming that it's just you maybe, um, but the larger ECEs do face staffing shortages sometimes when they have larger amounts of kids. So that is something that's a big barrier for them. Um, and we always really just encourage to keep it as simple as possible. A rack of bananas on the counter is plenty enough. So, you know, no stress. Um, and we wanted to also share from the Food Hub and TA land. So TA is technical assistance. Um, because we've been doing this work, you know, we had a lot of learning opportunities, I'll call them. <laughs> a lot of firsthand experience <laughs> um, to learn things. So a couple of things that shouted out to me when kind of building this presentation. Okay, what were the things that we kept asking ourselves? Like, first off, where's all the fruit? Um, probably if you don't know, well, you know, First time experience as a mom of a six year old and having lots of cakey friends and provider feedback. Um, cakey love fruit, right? They can peel it themselves, it packs easily, it tastes delicious on its own or mixed together with other fruit. It's just fun. Um, unfortunately for Kauai, though, invasive species like parakeets and pests like avocado lace bug, along with extreme weather. Uh, land access barriers, um, water issues, and simply not enough farmers choosing to sell into food access channels are big barriers to an abundant fruit supply. Uh, so we reach out to every farmer we know, and many we don't know, <laughs> to boost fruit availability. Um, we also think long term by hosting tree giveaways to SNAP EBT customers in schools. We also write and award grants to farmers who are committed to selling locally so they can purchase mature trees, right? Trees that are closer to giving fruit so that they can harvest in the near future. Um, and we also sell a variety of plant starts on our food hub to make growing food more accessible to our community. So we do our best. Um, we also work with KISC or at least try to, you know, get the word out on how farmers can manage invasive species and pests. So that is on deck for us too. Um, another interesting barrier is, you know, like when is school in session? <laughs> um, I know you guys like to take vacation here and there, I hope. Um, but we evaluated each of our ECE sites and they all agreed that MK's free delivery service makes local procurement easier. So we bring the food to you. Yeah, you don't have to go get in your car and come drive down somewhere to pick it up. We'll bring it to you. And um, we go as far as offering free delivery um, because we just really love the farm to EC movement. So, um, but that means, you know, delivery for with delivery, that timing is everything, right? So. I don't know about you guys, we get a lot of traffic and road work and that takes extra time out of our day and it creates this domino effect when we're packing and delivering orders on the same day. Um, so it helps for food hubs to know about state and federal holidays that you guys take off, field trips if you do them, um, any vacation time, any kind of school breaks that are coming up just to avoid a missed delivery because you're doing that shopping window, right? With the delivery a couple days later. So sometimes those get overlooked. Um, it's also good to establish a clear delivery time frame on that day. Um, this is especially so for the kindergarten through 12th grade schools. 
um, establishing a time frame from the beginning so we're not showing up after everyone has gone home <laughs> or clocked out for the day. Um, but I know as providers, you watch Keiki from your home. Um, but it could be helpful for you if your food hub knows when nap time is. Um, MK offers a contact-free delivery option. So we encourage our customers to leave a cooler outside so we can drop off groceries without disturbing anyone. And then, let's see, handle with care. So through our Farm to ECE work, we've found that Family child care providers are some of our kindest customers, like honestly, and we try to reflect that in our work with them and do our best to handle with care. Uh, when we run incentive programs, it can sometimes be difficult to onboard providers who have not shopped on our online platform before. Um, and of, like with anything, right, like not knowing how it works, like I don't know how to set up this um, new cable box and I'll just let it sit there because <laughs> I don't have the time to figure it out. Um, <laughs> but we anticipate for that time needed and we set aside extra time in the beginning when we're bringing in new providers to kind of give them a tour. So I'll literally get on a Zoom or a phone call and I'll host a quick tour of our online grocery store site. Uh, and I give insight on like popular items that other ECEs like to buy. And then I'll share a little behind the scenes details so new ECEs can further understand how it all works. And that always kind of helps. And then once that first order is made and received, folks usually get the hang of it. And for those who still have questions, I'm always available via phone or email to answer questions or offer assistance. So definitely if you're looking for a food hub, most times you can find that one-on-one -on -one customer service that you might not find at like, definitely won't find at the grocery store, um, but maybe at the farmer's market too. And then the last one is how much should I buy? And that's probably like the biggest question of the day. And I don't know if you folks serve CACFP meals. You do, yeah? I'm just gonna take a sip of water while you answer me. <laughs> Several of our providers are in the food program, but not all of them. Okay, cool. So that's awesome actually to have the freedom. Um, CACFP is, is nice for guidance though. And they like break down recipes so in detail that like you can just as long as you're good at, you like to measure and cut things precisely, that's your game. But it can be really overwhelming to cook CACFP recipes. Um, even just learning about it for myself took a really long time for it to embed in my brain. Um, that's why we included this page in the Garden to Grinds book. And it's just devoted to like, how much should I buy? And we used um, local fruits and vegetables as examples. and. Um, you know, it's shopping online is incredibly convenient, right? So food is at your fingertips, your account um, houses, your delivery address and your credit card information. So make grocery shopping like a breeze on either your phone or your computer. Um, the tricky part is you can't touch the products, right? You can't like... <clears throat> sniff it or like kind of squeeze it a little bit like you're you're trusting the farmer and the hub to do quality control and then when you receive your order um you want to take note of what items look like in terms of pounds you purchased to fine-tune your shopping carts um but I really like using this how much should I buy because we really just looked at every single item that we use a lot in this guidebook, right? Like, you're not gonna really find, you might, actually you will find taro leaves in the food buying guide. There's an app, yeah, that you use. The USDA food buying guide is online and then there's an app and you're supposed to add in the item and then you can figure out how much you should buy and how much it cooks down to and then how much you serve. So this is really just trying to take the guesswork out of all of that. Um, with things like ulu, bok choy, kale, carrots, wala, 
um, just to make it easier for you to buy local. Um, and then quick question, if you guys wanna unmute, I'm curious, have you received the Garden to Grinds book? And have any, has anyone tried a recipe yet? Maybe. Okay. Um, I did the beef luau. You did? What do you mm -hmm. think? Well, I ate it all. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> my, my babies there right now, they are discriminating against the color green. Oh, okay. so it makes it my a son does difficult. that too yeah it's weird like all of a sudden was it all of a sudden or just no they come into this season where anything mm -hmm. green they're like mm -mm. <laughs> you know and so how it actually gets into them is that I sit and I'll feed each one um one-on-one -on -one, and then they're more willing mm. so you know, that's what, that's what I, that's what I do. And then, you know, when I know that they've actually, like, the other uh, provider takes two bites, then I'm satisfied. I don't care to see the fresh produce wasted. That kind of really um, touches a chord in me. So there are things that sometimes I won't tr um, introduce to the children, knowing that it's going to waste, but then at the same time, mm -hmm how will they even come to mm -hmm. learn to like it too you know yeah. I'm const sometimes I, it's always like okay there goes the salad there goes a the salad in the trash and I'm like oh my gosh I know. you know I, I, I wish that it was better but then they're they're from zero to three so you can't really infant to three you can't really um that that's just their that's just their stages totally and, uh, yeah. So, you know, um, I just recently bought a, I used to put all, all the things that they don't care to eat in smoothies and then they stopped wanting smoothies. So mm -hmm. now I bought um, popsicle yeah. things. <laughs> I was like, I I'm going to make it into a popsicle and I hope you guys like that. it. <laughs> Did they like it? Well, I haven't done it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just I, recently I you... bought it. And like you said, yeah, like the phases, that's true for me too, like as an adult, like sometimes I just don't want to eat luau and then some days I just only want to eat that. And I yeah. think like, right, like how we honor that as a child, like as how we honor the child in deciding for themselves is really important too, but that's a personal opinion. Um, yeah. And I did want to touch on, because food waste definitely got brought up with all the aunties. And I love that you brought that up, too, because it is something on our mind. Like, whether or not we're getting, you know, incentives to buy this food, somebody grew this. Like, time was taken, resources were used for this food to come to me. And for me to waste it would be really sad. Um, so I know a lot of aunties that compost. I also know a lot of aunties that have animals that they feed the food to that the keiki don't eat. One has a donkey. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Elior dogs. One has a pig. So there's like all these creative ways to kind of mitigate that. And then also even just like starting super small with like one thing of lettuce between six kids, you know, like one leaf. <laughs> and really just divvying up the, on that like molecular level almost just to like just to get them used to it or even just you know be okay with them like playing with it but it's not like a whole head of lettuce so I love that you brought that up Auntie Mahalo and the beef luau recipe actually came from my son's father um so I'll share that you you ate them all <laughs> he'll be stoked <laughs> um okay and so since I know you guys don't live Kauai, I wanted to make sure that you were able to find your food hub. Um, and not all food hubs are the same, but we all share the same mission. So getting nutritious, locally sourced food to our communities while direct 
directly or directly supporting our producers is the mission. Um, MK is a member of the Hawaii Food Hub Hui, and we meet monthly with staff from all of the food hubs listed here. And um, we encourage you to reach out to them. Anyone who's closest to you, let them know Malama Kauai sent you. Tell them you talk to me. <laughs> They'll probably laugh. Um, and see how you can start procuring local groceries from them. Uh, they all, there's a couple things we all share in common. 93% support child nutrition programs and 86% offer online food purchasing. And I'm almost 100% sure almost all of them do delivery. So definitely check them out. Um, and then I'm happy to share this slide with you as well as like contact information if you need, um, if you want. And then I just wanted to share a little bit of what's in store for the future, because that's always important. Um, we are going to be able to accept online payments for SNAP, EBT, and WIC very soon. We're so excited because right now, we don't accept WIC at all. Nobody, no farmer's market or food hub is allowed to by the feds. Um, so we're working on that pilot project right now. And we're only one of three farmer's markets that will be able to do that in all of Hawaii for WIC. So we're really, really excited for that. Um, that's women, infant, and children. And they serve pregnant women and then up until their keiki are five years old. And um, they'll be able to purchase fresh produce and poi with their WIC benefits, super huge. And then also being able to accept SNAP EBT online because right now we can only process in person and we're not allowed to like save any kind of card information. So it always has to be done every single time a SNAP customer orders. Um, so this will definitely give us the freedom to like open up and expand. Um, we're also in our phase three of our farm to ECE and it's called farm to family child care center. So we're working exclusively with uh, 12 Kauai patch providers and offering um, more incentives for them to buy local groceries and feed the kids. And then we're gonna be launching uh, Kalo to Kula or um, Taro to School for uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. And that's here on Kauai again. Um, because we're known for our Kalo, yeah. So we just want to make sure that Kalo kind of reclaims its its rightful place on the Keiki's plate and hopefully get it into the cafeteria at schools in all kinds of ways. So, you know, not just poi, not just Kalo Pa'a, but like hopefully some Luau stews, um, some Lao Lao, and, and then also some creative dishes um, that kind of merge cuisines. And then we're also doing food tree plantings on school campuses. Our new Moloa'a Aina Center is opening up. And that's our brand new food hub facility um, where uh, the Moloa'a farmers can make value added products with their harvests. And then we'll be also doing some more cow for cakey summer meals. So lots on deck and um, Here's just a way to get connected if you guys are interested or if you know or if you have Ohana and Kauai and you want to link us up, you can sign up for the e-newsletter that we have on malamakauai.org. You can follow us on social media. Um, I think we're on Instagram, malama underscore Kauai. And then if you are on the island or if you know people who are, they're welcome to check out kauailocalfood.com. And then they can email me with questions. And now this is our Q&A time. What do we do? Oh, 611. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is everything I've got for y'all ladies. <laughs> Thank I you, Stormy. I, yeah, you're welcome. Questions that you'd like to ask? Oh, yeah. I have a question. You mentioned um, if we have parents on um, SNAP um, mm -hmm. that they could purchase, not SNAP, but um, what's the other one that they get? The box. When they purchase POI, you said they get 50% off. Do they have to show some kind of ID or something like that when they go through the checkout? 
how do yes. they how do they get that so every snap customer should have received a Debux card i don't have one i'm sorry but it's the Debux logo on an actual like plastic card uh -huh. um, when they shop at a grocery store they can pick out local produce and poi they go to the checkout they pay with their snap but they have to they have to show their card first and their card has to be scanned what we've heard um is that sometimes the grocery um the grocery store staff forget to ask and then the snap customer forgets to use it and then the discount is just forgotten so if you're not like with your card ready to be like hey this is my coupon you know basically 50 percent off and sometimes they forget so yeah you have to bring a card um when you're at the grocery store with us it's just automatic so we don't require a card because we know already that they get the benefit. So we just add it automatically. We add that discount automatically. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Poi eaters. Poi is very expensive on, on the big island. It's like $14 for a small container of uh, oh. holiday poi. Hanalei poi is expensive here too. It's like $12. Luckily, um, my favorite poi comes from Waipa and it's $6 a pound. So they, um, I don't know how they keep the price down. Oh, you know what? They have volunteers that help them mill, clean, or clean, cook, and mill it. So, you know, they offset that price. Um, I do know when I came to Hawaii Island, you said, Yes. Um, I visited I visited Keokaha General Store and the uncle from YPO just had drop off bags of poi was only was eight dollars, I think, one pound. And was good. <laughs> wow. It was really good. Yeah. So I don't know if you live Keokaha. No, that's kind of a drive. <laughs> Far. Okay. Shucks. I know you guys island is big. <laughs> but maybe, yeah. I'm sorry, Hanalei is expensive. They, they And then, you know, the shipping cost to get it from one island to the next is rough. So if you can find a local source for your poi, you know. And also, um, one of my uncles turned me on to this idea, like, we don't have to live in ancient times, right? Like, it's okay to buy kalo, steam it in your Instapot, and then blend it in your blender. Like, there's no shame in that. Like, it's okay. And I've done that, and it's it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that with kids, but <laughs> that would be a fun, fun. Right, activity. that's definitely a, a hands-on activity. Yeah, <laughs> I have poi eaters, so yeah, poi is a big deal here. Okay, well then maybe they would really love that, and even the your parents, because if you know the cost is too high for everybody, then you know you just hui up, make a poi day at your provider care center. What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's a good idea make your own poi i because i tried the poi with um what is that granola added to it and then with the fruits oh man when i when saw I... that recipe in the book i tried Yay. it oh my gosh <laughs> thank you thank you for that recipe yeah. <laughs> You're so welcome. We did something like a spin off of that for our cocoa for Keiki because we had plenty of papaya. So we um, suggested papaya boats. So you use a papaya and then you put your poi and your granola. And even that was like really good too. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> We're going to have one poi cook off next meeting, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading your guys' comments. If you have any questions, um, you can shoot. Yeah, yeah, we need to figure out how to do a, a cooking class together. Oh my gosh, it'd be so much fun. <laughs> all of us, somehow. <laughs> right. From all different islands too, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so good. Kamuela. Hey, I'm down to come holo holo to Hawaii Island. I love it over there. <laughs> Even Oahu too, I come a lot for work. 
Yay, smoothies, gardening. Awesome. Sorry, I just want to capture all this good mana'o. Is there a way to save the chat, Tammy? Yeah. Oops, sorry. Um, I did. Hmm. I will. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. I think there is a way. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm happy to let you leave. I'm sure you had a long day. My son is still watching TV. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> <lie>. <laughs> yeah. Thank oh. you so much. I appreciate you being here and sharing everything that you've taught us tonight, all the good information. And I hope you guys check out the food hubs that are close to you because that's such a great idea to get it right from the, the right from the source. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Anybody I'm have the food hub. I'm on um, farm links. I I didn't go ahead and add it in the beginning. I was like, where's my, my mute thingy? So mm. <laughs> sorry, no but I'm with farm links. They're really great. I mean, you just, I order it the day before and I get it the next day and oh my gosh, they bring it straight to my door and actually they leave it in my garage and it comes, it's, it's chilled and they have like this, um, they put it in a box and then there's like these small little ice trays, um, ice packs in it and it keeps it really cool. And hmm, I really love mm. my veg fruits and veggies. Oh, I ordered awesome. the poi one time, which is why I got my um, poi and granola mm. and bananas and all, all these things to add to my smooth, my granola thingy. Oh my gosh, mm. it was so fun. Oh, okay, I gotta go make food now. No. <laughs> 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 Yay, I'm gonna tell them. They're so awesome too. And they're amazing that they can do like that quick turnaround of like order today, get tomorrow. Like, oh, that is impressive. I'm definitely gonna let them know. Yay. Yeah, they're really, really great. It's awesome. Um, and each of you that are here tonight will get a gift card. I haven't quite nailed down the details yet, but I'm going to give you guys some sort of gift card in hopes that you'll go buy healthy foods for the cakey. So go check out those food hubs Yay, and take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. Farm link for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. food hub for you. <laughs> and you get a produce box and you get a produce box. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sounds so like Oprah. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. But better. If we can get that contact numbers, um, I, I took a picture when you flashed it on the on the screen of the names of the hubs, but um, a contact number, yeah. you know, in case I'm not able to Google it and find it that way would be great. For sure. The numbers for the, uh, yes, a wild hubs fresh was very to. easy to find. Um, okay, I had a I hard can time finding the uh, Roots Cultural Food Hub. Um, uh, Farm Link and Oahu Fresh, I'm doing it right now. It's super ooh, simple. I need to be really clear on everything. So I'm playing with it right now. So yeah. Yay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I found the I found the sites on my computer too, and I'm looking through it too. <laughs> oh my god, you know, you guys is a bomb. Okay. Technology. I love her. Um, I love the it. roots one, that's a good point, Mahalo, because they go by KKV or um Kokua Kalihi Valley is. Yes, I like, found it was Kalihi. Okay. Yes, when I found it. That, yes. Okay. Awesome. So Kokua Kalihi Valley is on Oahu. But if you guys all share the. Where Sorry. They are. Yeah. Auntie Kim, where yes. in Big Island do you live? I live in Waimea. So okay. I'm looking so at these. Country. It might be the Kohala Food Hub. I'm not sure yeah. where the food basket is. I'm not sure if they deliver, but. Yeah, I think Kohala Food Hub would be the best for you. I got to remember if Hilo goes and goes and delivers that far. I think the food basket does, though. The food basket does. And they're the actually... Delivers? Yeah, they deliver island-wide. And then Kohala Food Hub does, too. Yeah, well, but I'll I, gather, I can gather those contact infos too for all the 
the folks that aren't doing it right now. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm going to share the recording with all of you as well. So you guys can go back and look at the slideshow again. Okay. Thank you. So excited. Oh, thank you. This was such a joy. I'm so stoked we got to meet. And um, yeah, let's do it again. <laughs>